welcome back to another episode of the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and I'm going to be your host for the next hour or so as we talk once again about the flat earth. I can't stop thinking about it. If it's a distraction, it's got me totally distracted. But the way my mind has woven this together and the way I think about this now is that this distraction, this deception, this whatever it is, or this new truth that we're finding out is a centerpiece without which I don't think the new world order, the control system could operate. You know, we often look at uh, the new world order and the matrix that we live in as a house of cards. And uh, that means that it's frail and it can be easily taken down. But in looking at it like that, one of the bottom cards, one of the cards that's in the middle and holding up the whole structure could be the spherical earth theory. And we're going to get into that pretty much in depth today. So if you're into that kind of information, stick around and I'll show you how it weaves together in my mind anyway. When I did my first video on the Flat Earth, I was assuming that it was a deception. And the reason that, the reason that I assumed that is because everything else in my young life has been simply that a deception. My life starts off 1945 which was at the end of World War II. And it wasn't until two or three years ago I found out that that was simply a PSYOP. It was orchestrated by the banksters. Now the banksters put Hitler in place. Well, actually they created the Treaty of Versailles, which made the German people destitute. They put Hitler in place financed him and armed him. So they, they created Hitler. And of course, they're making money on this. They did the same thing to Stalin. They had orchestrated the Bolshevik Revolution before, and so it became a communist state. And they put in what I consider to be one of the most ruthless maniacs in the 20th century, Stalin, to orchestrate that side of the war. And then, of course, they persuaded the United States to get involved. Roosevelt to get involved, and we were in a world war situation that killed hundreds of millions of people, um, left people, left orphans, left people homeless, left a lot of people without limbs. It just created consternation and horrible misery, but it was orchestrated. So that was the first thing that hit me. Now, it didn't hit me that it was orchestrated until much later, but that was, that was how I began life. And then, of course, I grew, I grew up during the rock and roll thing. Rock and roll was just new. It was Elvis, Elvis Presley. It seemed pretty harmless. And I can remember the, the evangelists were really against it. None of us could understand why it seemed so innocent. It seemed like, oh, this is really great music and we're having a lot of fun. We didn't see what it was leading to. We didn't understand that it was a Tavistock orchestrated deception to lead us to cultural Marxism in the United States. Uh, that demoralization, uh, demoralizing, uh, demoralization. What is it when you lose your morals? Whatever it is, that's what it did. Because this began simple. This is a picture of Buddy Holly and those are the, the crickets or whatever they're called. Um, his backup group it looks so innocent and cute and wonderful. Nowadays, there's Ozzy Osbourne singing chants to Satan back and forth. We saw a picture the other day of a woman named Keisha who is a performing artist, supposedly a singer, and she was drinking blood from a human heart on stage. Now, it might not have been real heart or it might not have been a real blood, but that's 
allowed that deception. And that deception was part of my life. I loved rock and roll. I loved this. Oh, I was just, it was just what held me together, held my generation together. And it was naturally wonderful. Uh, when I got into my teens and 20s, of course, we were living through the peace, love, hippie movement. Um, and it was orchestrated by Tavistock to coincide with the awakening that was taking place. There's a natural cycle of awakening, crisis, awakening, crisis. Tavistock timed this awakening, which was going toward equality and no more wars. Equality and no more wars. And they were able to sufficiently influence it, create it. I mean, look, this, this isn't a natural outgrowth of anything. Look at this. Look at these colors. We were into it. And so Tavistock was able to derail the peace movement, derail the civil rights movement, and put us into sex, drugs, and rock and roll, which was fantastic, but it threw us off course. And so anything that could have damaged their, you know, they need, they need wars. That's how they make their money. That's how they control people. That's how wars are really critical. And also inequality. They're trying to orchestrate right now a race war in the United States. We still have, if, it's, if everybody's equal and everybody's sharing, uh, it's hard to separate them. It's hard to rule them. So you have to have fear and you have to have separation. Uh, you know, divide and conquer. And that's what they were doing with this movement. I lived through this deception. And then, of course, there was the Kennedy assassination that happened in, well, I was home on Thanksgiving break from college. It was about 1963. And I thought it was horrible. I mean, everybody loved Kennedy and this was a horrible thing. And this demon down here, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, was shot right there on live TV. So, like, he was avenged. We, everybody could put it away, but we didn't know that he was a patsy. Now we know he's a patsy. We know who he worked for. We know that the CIA orchestrated everything. Um, some of the CIA members even pulled triggers. So it's all out there. And that big piece of my life is a deception. And then here's one I fell for. Oh, more than hook, line, and sinker. I was there, man. Uh, the New Age movement. I read, I spent 30 years in a New Age bookstore looking, reading everything I could. I threw, I went through the Course in Miracles, uh, Sufi movement. Uh, I was behind Osho. I mean, I, I was there. I did a PhD in New Age. Uh, so I was there. I know everything about it. And it totally distracted me. It totally threw off course. It actually caused me to make my, make my own morality situation ethics. You know, this combined with the, the hippie movement and then bleeding into the liberal green movement was so strong in my generation, and they were all deceptions, and they still are deceptions, and there are still people influenced by those de deceptions. I'm going to do a lot of work in upcoming World Beyond Beliefs, exposing this new age deception, because I think it's going to lead a lot of people right into the hands of the controllers through the uh, birth of the Luciferian movement, which is about to happen. All right, continuing with my life, um, false flags. We uh, know about false flags because they happen all the time. And we're waking up to the false flags. Now, the false flags we know are a deception. Okay, here we have William Casey. He used to be head of the FBI. And in one of the first meetings he had with his staff, he said, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. So here we are with the government, with the corporations, 
totally loading me with one deception after another throughout my whole life, leading to this. Now, now we're during the now we're in the awakening. Now the awakening is I think I think it's personally an organic movement. It's something that's growing out of us because so many of us are being able to see these things all at once. It could be a deception. It could be that we're involved in what they call the externalization of the hierarchy, where they want to tell us that they were involved and they were in charge and they're satanic and here's what we do. That could be, the awakening could be theirs and it certainly is controlled now or a lot of it's controlled by the New Age movement. The people that control the New Age movement are now uh, heavily involved in um, this deception and they're controlling the awakening. So here's a guy, now he's, he's a member of the Club of Rome, which is devoted to pushing uh, climate change and the population uh, reduction to 500 million. So you can see why it was natural for me to assume that this is another deception. And so when I made our first uh, podcast, World Beyond Belief, um, 135, it was, I was in the mindset that this is naturally deception. Now, how can they use this deception? Why would they want to switch it back? And I explored those ideas. What I want to do in this podcast is take another tact. Let's look at it as if it's a reality and how that would change things. Now, bumping up against my natural skepticism is uh, the awakening. I really do think the awakening is, or, is an organic awakening and it's really coming out of just human consciousness waking up. And I say that for a bunch of reasons. One, the, the force that they use with the mainstream media to downplay what's happening and keep a lot of people under control. Second of all, the corruption of the alternative media. I mean, there's more corruption in the alternative media than God, than there's honest reporters in the alternative media. I also uh, think that they're shutting down journalism um, altogether. Jade Helm, they're forbidding coverage of Jade Helm. So I think there is a normal organic awakening. Also, I think the pace is quickened. I think that they're doing things faster. I think they're rushing things. I think things that they tried to pull off, like the Ebola thing, um, they're rushing vaccines. I don't think it's going to work. I think that is a result of the natural awakening that they they don't they just don't have it under control. <clears throat> but is the flat Earth an organic thing? Is it part of the natural awakening? Let's listen to uh, Lisa M. Harrison interview uh, Mark Knight on just this topic. Mark is pretty much an expert on the flat Earth. It feels like the beginning of something huge. This is why it's, it's a dangerous time because things could get really messed up. Because if the powers that be see that it's going to be something huge, they're going to get in there and they're going to divide and create a leader that they can control. I can't help but feel that it's happening with their knowledge and consent, and perhaps even their support, because it's just going to be too quick. I give this 35%, I give, I give this 35 to 40% possibility. It's like the Beatles getting really big, you know, in what? The 60s. It's not possible at that time with the media. This is like pushed. And this does seem like it could be pushed. And yeah. why would they, Why? Why would exactly. they do that? This is my question. Why? I mean, I is, it, is it nothing more than just an avenue to, to come clean on some of their own? I don't think they have Stuff. that level of uh, compassion or. You know, they don't oh, care. it wouldn't be for compassion. I think it's be, it's through law. You know that, you know the whole idea that they have to give consent. Well, I agree with them. It could be, 
could be influenced, could be led. But I'm going to try to show today on this show why I think it's totally organic and just part of the awakening. Um, I'm going to have you go through a little mental gymnastics with me. Uh, and people who watch our regular listeners to the World Beyond Belief, this is nothing. I have, we do mental gymnastics every week, every podcast we do. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to be assured that the awakening is, is organic. Yes, it's being corrupted and there's a lot of people that are trying to shape it into the Luciferian camp. But there is a natural awakening. And second of all, now this can be a jump. I want you to believe that the earth is flat. It's absolutely flat. Uh, I don't care about the other configurations, whether we have a firmament, whether the wire's falling off the edge. It's just flat. Believe the flat earth for a minute. Now, if you're new to this, you might want to stop this video and go back and do a few, a little research and watch a few videos because they're pretty convincing. If you're new, now I'll, I'll tell you a trick. If you're new to this, YouTube is trying to put everybody that's interested in this topic into the camp of those who are going to control the opposition. Uh, the Flat Earth Society is one. So when you click on this and you go to YouTube and you Google and you, you type Flat Earth into YouTube, what's going to happen is the first half of page at least are going to be the controlled opposition. You'll find Wikipedia, you'll find the Flat Earth Society and others. Go to the second page and click on the one on the top of the second page because that'll give you some legitimate uh, uh, information about the Flat Earth. And if you've never heard of this before, probably a good idea to do that before so you can really imagine, like I'm asking you to do, really imagine, get into it, the Earth is flat, the awakening is happening. Okay, you got that? Okay. It's When you walk into school the first day, what do they tell you? They tell you two things. Because it's one of our two basic childhood facts. One plus one equals two, and the earth is a globe. We're taught this before almost everything else. And that right there should give you a clue on how serious this secret is. Yeah, it's undeniable. The first thing you're going to see when you go into a classroom is that ball earth sitting, that globe sitting over there in the corner. And you're going to find out where you are on that globe and find it. But more than the fact that the earth is a globe, it teaches you what's called an epistemology. Now, epistemology is how you get knowledge, how you learn, how you gain, how you, how you gain credibility for things that come into your head. And the epistemology you learn that first day of school is that not to trust your eyes, not to trust your senses that everything's flat, and everything goes to a vanishing point, but trust authority, trust science, because they know best. And it's not, it's not everything is okay, what you see is real. It's totally different. It's all about trusting science and trusting authority. That's important. And that's really important for the New World Order, as we'll get to later. It also replaces uh, a creator God with chance. In other words, if we're on a flat earth, and we're under a dome, or it's limit, it has a limit, and we're the highest level of consciousness on the planet, it would seem to indicate that there's, some, there's, there's a creator God. Something created this beautiful landscape. Something created us. Something left this here for us. Um, it replaces that, and it allows other things to get in, like chance. We're just here by chance. We're just another uh, group of intelligent apes floating, floating around on a spinning ball in the middle of uh, countless universes. It makes us pretty, pretty darn insignificant. It also implies that science knows. 
that this whole thing about the flat earth is decided. And you'll find, if you study the flat earth at all, that it's anything but decided. The only reason that it's not in public debate right now is because of NASA. And NASA has been ripped apart and, and found out about so many times that it's no longer credible. So I think that's one of the big reasons why this whole notion of the flat earth is pushed back into our consciousness, our awakening consciousness. Also, it teaches us that science as we know it is the pinnacle of knowledge on the planet. We're as, as far as advanced as we've ever been. Uh, we have jet planes, we have cars, we have big cities, and it shuts out all the ancient knowledge. Lao Tzu, uh, China, the ancient Chinese wisdom. T Chinese believed it was a flat earth up until the 17th century, and then it was dissuaded by a Jesuit missionary. Egypt thought it was flat. It discounts the pyramids as being advanced knowledge of some civilization. Also, the Yuga cycles, the fact that we've been in a golden age and are going through uh, a time of learning in the Kali Yuga. So it sets up science as the ultimate knowledge, as the ultimate arbitrator, knowing everything. And this is part of your epistemology that you learn. And we wonder why it's hard to get people to believe that 911 was an inside job. It's because the first day of school, they got us. Also, this whole thing underlines the fact that, not the fact, the false fact that we live in a physical universe uh, governed by immutable laws, which, I don't know, there's a lot of disagreement on that. And the immutable laws, I don't know whether you've looked into it, but the speed of light isn't just a speed like 60 miles an hour. It'd be much faster than that, but is isn't just one speed. It changes. So what they use as a speed of light is an amalgamation, like an average of, of the observations that they've made. And they use that in their calculations. So uh, the universe is in flux. Uh, it, um, it, it, dis it disregards quantum, uh, the quantum reality. It disregards uh, consciousness as being the ground of all being. It disregards all the evidence of a holographic reality that we live in. It, it doesn't even talk about things like other dimensions and things like that. It gives you a physical universe. Here we are. This is, this is what's real. Bang, bang, bang. Science says this is real. It's made up of atoms. And there you go. They don't talk about the atoms being only there when you're looking at them. So, the bottom line is, you're given the epistemology of listening to authority, and science is part of the authority. So that's what you learn. And what you're starting to learn now, because of media in the classroom, is that to trust the media. And that really influences us because we see things. And, you know, when your mind watches something, when you see something on TV and you react to it, your subconscious doesn't know the difference between reality and fact. It reacts to it the same way. It's, it's imprinted in your body and in your mind as if it's fact. So they've got it so that not only does authority tell you and science tells you, but also you've seen it with your own eyes because you've seen it through the media. Do you think it's a coincidence that the Star Trek series ran from 67 to 69 and the moon landing happened on 69? Do you think that was a little predictive programming? Do you think that was a little expectation about outer space and the fact that there is outer space? Now, in our, in our world today, we believe the media totally. Uh, it's really hard to break people away from, from the news, to try to get them to think for themselves. And through the media, they do a, a wonderful thing called predictive programming which is where they put stuff in your brain so that your brain creates the reality that 
you see. That's why the dark dystopian movies that you see nowadays, because they want you to get your head and they want your, your consciousness, which is the creative part of this universe, your or this flat earth. See, see how hard it is? Um, you create that reality through predictive programming and they do that through the media. So you trust the media. Oh, it's just entertainment or it's real live information. But it creates it creates your reality all the time. It makes me wonder, makes me not wonder why everybody's looking for disclosure. You know, are there aliens out there? What's going on? We want the government to tell us. Well, the government lies to you all the time. Uh, it's just because this epistemology that we learn that we're looking for disclosure. Uh, Otherwise, if you just took the facts, how many times have you been tricked by the government? How many times have you been fooled by authority? You wouldn't be looking for disclosure. You'd be looking for uh, fellow groups, of fellow members of society that were interested in the same thing you are and going after facts and investigation. Actually, that's what's happening in the flat earth community. They're not going toward authority at all. There's a thousand people out there doing science experiments to prove that it's a flat earth. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Also, with this epistemology and with the fact that we're on a ball earth in the, million of, in the middle of millions of other ballers, it kind of relieves us of, the, of a real stewardship for the earth, you know? Since, yeah, if we burn this up, if this earth becomes a cinder like, say, Mars, we can just, <clears throat> we'll have the technology by then to fly off to another planet. If it's just us on the earth, a God that created us and the earth, I think we'd be a lot more responsibility. I might be wrong on that, but I think we'd take it, take it seriously. And the fact that we have finite land, finite resources, finite water might put an end to something like fracking. I don't know. Also, the ball earth and outer space and people landing give us tales like uh, the Nephilim and the Anunnaki. Now, they might be true, but I believe if they are true, they're interdimensionals. They're not coming in out of the, out of the, uh, from outer space because on the flat earth, there is no outer space. We have to deal with what we are and what we have, and we have to trust ourselves, and we have to trust our eyes and ears because this epistemology has got us into big trouble, and I'll explain that. Well, this epistemology where you have to, you know, believe science and authority paves the way for uh, Darwin's creation myth. Now, if you've never looked into this, it's, it, this is taught in every elementary school, in every school, this is taught as fact. If you look into it, again, if you look into it on YouTube, you type in uh, Darwin's theory of evolution, you're going to get the first two pages are going to be, uh, or, or you, have to, you have to do exploding, shattering the myths of Darwin or something like that to really get an analysis of, of someone who's looked into it and isn't afraid to debug it. Uh, again, skip the first couple entries because it'll be designed to get you back into the Darwin myth because this is a critical myth. This epistemology that you've learned allows you to get inserted into this myth very easily. They teach it on every level of school from kindergarten to PhD. If you get a PhD in biology, you're studying uh, within the structure of the Darwinian evolution myth. Uh, it's, it's very sacred, and I'm going to go into why that's very sacred in a minute, and why the flat earth theory is going to blow that and that whole structure away. Uh, the Darwin myth, it, 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 it makes us a chance creation. It makes um, the human eyeball an accident. 
that just over a period of time grew out of some type of pond scum. Um, I'm being I'm being very vivid in my language, but that's what it means. It means there was no divine intervention at all. It just happened by happenstance. And you, it says you, you're a creation of happenstance. You're not a divine creation. You're an accident. You're just an accident that happened. Also, it creates this extremely long-term um, events. What, what they do when they, they develop a theory that's not really provable. Uh, you know that Darwin evolution is a theory, don't you? It's not a fact. It's a theory. The, the, the thing that makes a theory different from a fact is a fact can be proven. A theory is just, this might happen. What they do when they have a theory that they can't prove is they extend the period of time. They, expend, they extend the distance so that it's very hard for you to get it in your mind millions and billions of years. Uh, and also, I mean, I, I've said this before in podcasts. There used to be a thing back in the 50s. Some comedian, I think it was Stan Freeberg, says that if you put an infinite number of monkeys in front of an infinite number of typewriters, they'll eventually type all of Shakespeare's great plays. Can't argue with it. Uh, it's hard to get an infinite number of monkeys and an infinite number of typewriters, but nevertheless, basically science does that all the time to keep this Darwinian thing in place. And it says that humans are just a smart ape. We're not a, uh, we're nothing special. Uh, matter of fact, there's movies like The Matrix that even compare us to virus, a problem on the planet. If we're us, if we're just another animal, if we're just a smart ape, then we can be eliminated. Our, our species can be a problem. See how this all weaves around the Darwinian evolution myth? That's a, that's a, it's a key component in the New World Order's um, game plan is Darwinian evolution. And you'll see how that happens in, in a minute. Did you know, I'm, I'm sure you did, that nobody can really enter or practice in the field of biology unless they buy this Darwinian myth hook, line, and sinker. So it totally limits what they're allowed to investigate, what they're allowed to um, find out is real. Um, they have to stick within the confines of that uh, paradigm. It's a paradigm. And although it's a theory, it quite frankly can't be proven because if it could be proven, they'd prove it. It would have been proven a long time ago. But they have to stay within the confines of that. They can't experiment and go beyond that. I actually have an interesting quote by Nikola Tesla. He said that the day science begins to study non-physical phenomenon, it will make more progress in one decade than all the previous centuries of existence. So if you have a science, you can't limit it to a, uh, to a theory. You've got to allow it to look at how does consciousness affect our biology. Uh, you have to, you have to, if you want to make progress, which I'm not, I'm sure they don't. Um, but if science wanted to make progress, they wouldn't hold people, especially biologists, to this narrow structure called Darwin, Darwinian evolution. <clears throat> And biology isn't the only science. I'm sure there's many sciences affected by this. One of them is geology. Now, see, geology is one of the things that props up the Darwinian evolution myth. And so the strata that they find the fossils in have to line up with the Darwinian evolution theory. So it affects, in a backward way, geology also. 
because Darwinian evolution has to stand. It has to stand in order to allow the New World Order to go into place. So, um, the globe replaces God with science. Uh, meanwhile, you know, we're stuck with science. We're stuck with science through their authority. The controllers, what are the controllers doing? They're doing uh, ritual magic. They're doing um, incantations to their demon gods and getting special powers because they're not limited by science. Actually, I heard, I've heard wise people say, much wiser than me, that science was put in place to keep us from magic. So they're not hampered by that. They're not hampered by sticking with Darwinian evolution or with uh, any of those things that hamstring us. They can do whatever they want, and they do. And they, they're able to accomplish a lot more than we are because we're controlled. Now let me tell you the real reason why the globe Earth is critically important to the New World Order and why um, the Flat Earth, I think, has to be an organic awakening and they're trying to control it even now uh, because it doesn't coincide with their philosophy and their philosophy that they're trying to push on us and, and make us part of it. If you know anything about Satanism, there's four basic tenets of Satanism. And all of those four tenets of Satanism depend in some shape or form on the mythology of the globe Earth. So let me go over them quickly. First of all, there's the worship of the ego. And what that means is that um, they're terrified of death because it destroys the individual ego. And the ego is the supreme thing. Matter of fact, uh, they're trying, uh, Cursewell and the, the ilk of the transhumanists are calling it God. That, that the ego is a God and that everything it does is fine. You know, it doesn't, it can't acknowledge a creator God. Second tenet of Satanism is that if, you're, if your ego is the most important thing, then you can do anything you want. Aleister Crowley's main, uh, what he's remembered for is his saying, uh, do what thou wilt. And you'll see it on t-shirts and everything because what the society is doing under the guidance of the New World Order is, is producing a, a society of Satanists that do what they will. Uh, it's called uh, moral rebel, relativity, um, uh, situational ethics, where there's no real morality. It's just whatever you feel like in the moment. And that's a big danger. Uh, the third thing is, Social Darwinism, uh, the survival of the fittest. And with the Satanist, it's the survival of the most ruthless. It's the most terrifying. It's the survival of the one that'll, that's the non, most non-caring. And the fifth, or the fourth tenet of Satanism is uh, eugenics. If my ego is everything, I can do what I want, and I've gotten to the top of the heap by my ruthlessness, I decide who lives and dies. So that's how it rolls out. So let's, let's go through them a little bit more slowly and see how the flat earth screws them up. With you, the first one, the ego is all that's important and everything. You're a god. You're a god of yourself. And the survival of the ego is all that matters. It, it's not compatible with a, a creator God. Now, these Satanists, they do have demon gods, but
that these demon gods are not creator gods. Uh, they'll say they are, but they're not. They're disruptor gods. They're gods that um, take what the creator of this gorgeous landscape I'm looking at made and perverts it. Perverts it into perverts it into exactly exactly the opposite of what it was meant to be. This is meant to be a nurturing, wonderful uh, planet for us to enjoy and relax. And they make it into a hell. They make it into a nine to five um, uh, st steel and concrete uh, lined um, torture chamber. They take um, natural fruit and turn it into GMO engineered crops. They take pure water and they, they mix it with fluoride to be a mind altering drug. Their God perverts. It changes everything. Uh, it takes schooling, which is a good idea. Education, train people, and they pervert it into a dumbing down. So that's what their God does. So they can't with the ego being God, recognize that there's a God outside of themselves. And honestly, I might be wrong on this, and write me if I am, <clears throat> but if you picture yourself on a flat earth, a beautiful flat earth with the other people in here, and, and it's under a dome structure, and we're in here, and we're, we're, human consciousness. We're the highest level of consciousness on here. And we're going through some type of an experience. You can't deny that there's something that created this. It couldn't have happened by chance. So, with a God outside, with a God superior to their demon gods, really knocks Satanism down a lot. And you have to realize that the control system is a Satanist-run control system. These are Satanist psych, uh, psychopathic pedophiles that are in charge of this. And if you haven't come to that realization yet, um, you need to do a little more research. Let's move on to the second thing. The second uh, tenet of Satanism is moral relativity. Do whatever you like. It's okay. Well, on a flat earth with a finite amount of resources uh, and people wanting to uh, continue the species, continue to have more people and grow responsible young people that'll carry the torch. I can remember when America was back in America uh, before it got really in big trouble. Uh, we used to really respect the family because we knew that the family was the thing that created young people. And the guidance of those young people was what created tomorrows for, for our children. It's really important. And there's a morality. Even if it's not a morality from God, it's a morality from us. There is a morality from God, by the way. There is a right thing and a wrong thing, and there's a good, and there's an evil. And if you don't know about that, while you're studying about the Satanists and their rituals and their activities, you'll find out that you know good from evil. There is a good, and there is an evil. So anyway, getting back to, to situational ethics, moral relativity, it's really important that for society, for people to continue, that they have some type of morality. And a morality where anything goes really doesn't work. Um, the fact that I could go and kill anybody, the fact that I had no conscience, the fact that I didn't know the difference between right and wrong. We can even go into uh, concepts about the family. Uh, the things that preserve the family that creates future generations, uh, that's a sacred little... Um, little structure that is allowed 
human beings to be on this planet for however long they've been on this planet. A man and a woman getting together to create and raise children. Now, personally, I'm not opposed to uh, gay couples. I think sometimes they can even be instrumental in raising children, but they can't create children. Uh, so there, there should be some type of favorable status, in my mind, for couples that can create children. Just my, my thinking through what would create a morality that would continue the species. But <clears throat> in Satanism, there's no morality. You can do whatever you want. You can destroy any part of the planet. You can do oil spills. You can do uh, geoengineering. You can do GMOs. You can, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. And they have to have that. That's the second tenet of Satanism. And that, I don't think that bodes very well with the flat earth theory. The third one, social Darwinism. Now, social Darwinism is Darwin, except it's in, in a societal context. Basic Darwin is the survival of the fittest. And how that works is that only the strong survive. Only the, uh, only the species that's able to get the most resources and fight. And Now, if you look into Darwinism at all, that there's plenty of uh, instances where that doesn't really... Uh, doesn't really happen. Uh, take, for example, the koala bear. The koala bear eats one kind of leaves, lives in one area. He's not diversified. He doesn't have teeth. He doesn't have teeth that'll fight other animals. But he's evolved to this point. He's still he's still around. It it doesn't. Regular Darwinism really it's it's so easy to shoot holes through. It, it's amazing. What iced the cake for me on Darwinism itself was a concept called genetic homostasis. And this is a scientific fact that when you have a species, you can mutate the species, you can breed to mutate the species. Let's say breed dogs smaller and smaller and smaller till you get to a point. And then it'll either become sterile, or it'll start going back to the original shape. You can't go outside of those parameters of genetic homostasis. It's got to stay in there. And to make, to make the theory of evolution a fact, all you have to do as a scientist is to break genetic homostasis or prove that it can be done. And you could do it with fruit flies. They have a 24-hour life cycle. You could do, you know, a thousand generations in a thousand days. But they can't do it because they bump up against genetic homostasis. So as you get investigating Darwinism a little bit more and more, you'll find that it's propped up by the New World Order because the New World Order needs Darwinism to do social Darwinism. And social Darwinism is where... Only the strong survive. The smart guy, the guy who's able to maneuver around business, and the, the guy who's able to uh, make his way. Well, you know what? Nowadays in business, uh, only the ruthless survive, and the most ruthless get to the top. That's obvious. The people that sell their soul are the ones that get to the top. The ones that'll do anything are the ones that get to the top. That's not, the, what the, what's not the people you want at the top. That's why people like, uh, oh, I don't know, George Soros or uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski or Henry Kissinger are occupying uh, very influential positions in the world today because they're, they're not human. These guys are animals. They're ruthless. They're psychopaths. So social Darwinism allows the psychopaths, the satanic psychopaths, to, to rule the world. And they need Darwinism to get social Darwinism, and the flat earth doesn't allow that. 
And then, of course, the last one is eugenics. With eugenics, uh, people like Kissinger and Brzezinski and Soros can decide who live and die. That's what they're doing right now. Soros is financing race wars in the United States. So that one will kill the other. He decides, his money decides, that they're going to wipe one another out. And that's how it works. But none of those things work on the flat earth. And that's why I think, my own humble opinion, that the flat earth is an organic thing. It's part of the general awakening, which I know is organic. And without um, the flat earth, you don't have, you have a God. And without the flat earth, you don't have Darwinism. And without Darwinism, you can't support Satanism. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to create everybody as a Satanist. It's like, uh, I can remember, uh, 30, 40 years ago, reading books called uh, Swimming with Sharks, Looking Out for Number One. They're they've turned it so that the ego is all that's, all that's important. I mean, people work on their abs. They work on uh, uh, being the perfect, beautiful self. They work on all, it's all about the ego. And that's all that's happening and, they, and what they're trying to do is pervert our whole culture and our whole species. Our species is a really caring, wonderful species. If you pare it right down, I mean, if somebody um, is stepping out in front of a car or gets hit by a car, most people run over and help them. Most people have compassion. Most people can't stand to see someone homeless. Um, Panhandlers, before they got rounded up and put at FEMA camps in the United States, used to make their living just, just on the generosity of others. No, I think human beings are a wonderful species, but they're trying to make us into this satanic nightmare species that they want to do. And they take away our ethics. If you listen to this, this is something that I sound like an old guy railing on this one. But if you listen to the lyrics of the songs, that are popular today, um, I'm shocked. And you know, I was a, I was a flower child. I was a hippie. I was open for anything. But nowadays, it's all about uh, animal type sex and uh, uh, doing what you want. I'll, you know, it's uh, it's my party, and I'll and I'll do what I want. I mean, it's really. Satanists, the New World Order, has really pushed us so far in this direction uh, because, partially because, of the globe earth and the epistemology that goes with it. We'll tell you what to believe, we're the authority, and you'll go with what we want. So, anyway, that's why I think that um, the flat earth is organic and the flat earth could totally derail uh, the globe model and in turn would derail the Satanist global New World Order agenda. Um, it's summarized really well by probably the, the guy who started off the major, uh, the new Flat Earth movement, Eric Dubai. Let's hear what he says about it.
during the awakening. There are thousands. There are thousands of very intelligent people that are out there working to create proofs that we're on the flat earth. And it's upsetting the control system so that they've moved from the point where they're just ridiculing flat earthers to really trying to encounter them with some proof that, that the ball earth exists. But still, there are a thousand of the awakened who are working day and night to try to derail the ball earth theory. And by derailing the ball earth theory, they're going to inadvertently or purposely derail the new world. Well, that's my two cents on this subject. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.